Hi guys, this is Jake at Canadian Cutting Edge, and today is the NLAN EW107, a full-size folder flipper with a clip point blade, coated G10 handle, a nice big hardy kind of knife. If you're interested in a knife like this, stick around for the full review of the NLAN EW107. We're looking at a regular full-size style knife here by Enlan. Enlan is one of those Chinese companies that is uh, a manufacturer that makes fairly good knives. They don't have that many knives that really excel. And they don't have very many knives that just are done very poorly, that are just you know garbage and not worth checking out at all. Let me talk about the specs on this knife, and then I'll talk about the features that I like and don't like about it. And you'll make up your mind if you want to get one of these or not. First, 8CR13 MOV steel. I don't have a problem with that. That's a decent budget steel done quite well in China. Well, it's a Chinese steel to start with, and they do an okay job with it. I like it. It generally works well, and Enlan does a good job with heat treating it usually ends up around 58 Rockwell hardness, and that's what this is supposedly at. I've got no way of testing Rockwell hardness. And the coating on this knife is not listed anywhere. The manufacturer doesn't list this knife on their website, and so there's no way of knowing what this coating is. It looks like it's supposed to be one of those Teflon coatings. It's got that kind of grayish kind of, uh, sorry, not Teflon, titanium kind of coatings, uh, that kind of look to it. Uh, be that as it may, we just don't know. Uh, it doesn't look like a powder coat, although it could be. It just feels a little smooth. Powder coats can be smooth, so it's just hard to tell. We've got a saber grind. We've got a sort of modified grind that you generally see on um, Tanto blades. And hopefully I can get the light to shine just right to demonstrate what I'm talking about. There you go. In that light, it shows up better. You can see it, especially right there, that line right there. So you've got a flat grind here and then a flat grind here, and they sort of meet each other where that line is. Instead of having a smooth one grind all the way around, they sort of separated the two spots like they do on a tanto. But it is just a nice big long belly and then a flat section here. A saber grind with a swedge at the top, a clip point here, and the swedge kind of comes along both sides about to the midpoint of the blade. And coming back, we've got a thumb riser with some jimping on it. The handle's got a little bit of jimping inside there, just on the liners, not on the G10 handle scales. Going to the back, you got some more jeep jimping on the liners and not on the handle scales again. And same thing on the other side, a little bit of jimping back here, just on the liners. A little bit of jimping here on the liner lock to release it. And you know, that's the basic layout of the knife. We've got a lanyard hole that's sort of an elongated hole back here. You can easily fit 550 paracord through there. Open pillar construction, two pillars at the back, a stop pin and the pivot. And that's all that holds this thing together. The stop pin is a nice, good, hardy size stop pin. I really like that about this knife. Uh, most stop pins are slightly smaller than this on most knives that are in this sort of size category. And these guys made it nice and large. I like that. It's a comfortable knife for my hand. My hands are large, bordering on extra large. And uh, that's between 9 and 10 in the European measurements. And it just fits really, really well in just about any kind of grip that you want to hold this knife in. The um, handle scales are made in a sort of diamond kind of shape. Um, they're lowest at the extremes, and then they go up to a point along the ridge right down the middle. And same thing on that side. And then that ridge has got a little grind all the way down it. And then on the right side, we've got access for the thumb stud if you want to deploy, 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 deploy the blade with a thumb. And very easily done with the right hand, but... There's no room to put this thumb stud on the left side. I don't even know why they went ahead and milled out this little spot if they weren't going to make it big enough for the thumb stud. They could have just made it straight across. You know, it just didn't need to be that way. But that's what they did. So 
this thumb stud is removable, but you can't turn it across to the other side because if you did, you wouldn't be able to close the knife completely because there's just not enough room. There's just not enough room for it to be, uh, it would hit the liner right there if you close the knife with that thick thumb stud there. So thumb stud works for right-handed people. The flipper works ambidextrously and uh, it works quite well. It doesn't fly out with any supreme kind of, you know, flying. <laughs> the detent is pretty good and, you know, it works. And as you can see, I'm doing okay with my left hand. Um, then again, I'm pretty experienced with folding knives with left hand. The pocket clip is right hand only, but it's tip up. That being said, if you're left-handed, you're going to really want this knife. It will work for you if you want it to, but it's not designed for your liking. Let's talk about the measurements. The cutting edge is 9.1 centimeters, which is 3.6 inches. The blade thickness is 3.4 millimeters, which is 0.13 inches. The thickness of the steel behind the grind, it's actually quite heavy. It's 0.81 millimeters, which is 0 0.032 inches. So that's a heavy EDC kind of thickness behind the grind for the, for the knife to be strong and durable, uh, not for a lot of delicate cutting. It, it's a very robust kind of thickness back there. It's workable, but you need to know what it is. The uh, handle length here is 12 centimeters, which is 4.75 inches. And the handle thickness at those ridges is 1.7 centimeters, which is 0.675 inches. Of course, a little bit bigger for the pocket clip there. The total length when the knife is open is 21.4 centimeters, which is 8.4 inches. And the knife weighs a robust 180, 168 grams which is 5.9 ounces. There's a little bit of skeletonizing on the liner that's on the show side here, but none on the locking side. They could have put some larger skeletonizing, I think, in there. Let me see if I can get the light just right for you to see. There you go. You can see those circles in the liner there where it's skeletonized, but the other side doesn't have any skeletonizing. And it could have been a 5.5 gram knife, I think, if they would have just... Uh, been a little bit more aggressive with their skeletonizing, made the liners just a little bit lighter. The pivot. The pivot's pretty good. What do we have for washers? Well, we've got one phosphor bronze washer and one white nylon washer. Uh, they work quite well. Uh, those of you who are familiar with my channel know that I don't mind nylon washers. Uh, they're actually a whole lot better than most people feel that they are. Uh, if we just use science, yes, they are fairly slippery and they can add quite a lot of uh, slickness to a pivot. You know, there's some professional knife makers who do custom knives that are thousands of dollars each who use nylon washers. So it's just the argument that nylon is just terrible is an old and now invalid argument anymore. Although you might still feel like it's not that good and I'm not going to fight with your feelings. Some of you are going to be interested in a cut test, so let's demonstrate. It cuts fairly well. That was a good slice. Not bad at all. This is a little bit heavier glossy paper, and it cuts through that quite well. Here's a couple layers of paracord, and you want to see how well that cuts. Zips through that quite easily, no problem. And then the slicing motion, it slices very well. This is nine strand 550 paracord. It's about the heaviest 550 paracord you can find. The hand feel. That's one of the pluses for this knife. I like how it feels in my hand. My hand is a very good size for this knife. Um, I can even use the flipping arm a little bit as a sneak up choil as long as I don't go too high. You notice there's no sharpener's choil on the blade. That's a little bit of a negative. But I can sneak up like that and use the knife like this and I haven't cut my finger here yet using it this way. Um, you know, I don't know if I will in the future or not, but it seems to work fairly well for me. The flipper arm does work as a good guard, so if you do use the knife in a stabbing motion and come to a stop against something solid, your hand's not going to fly over the blade and, and slice your fingers or 
or whatever. So that's a good thing. Uh, the jumping back here is relatively useless, although, you know, the hand can be gripping this knife in a great variety of grips, and it feels good in most of those, well, in all of those grips, it actually feels quite good. Uh, it's a very comfortable knife to hold, but the jimping doesn't do much. Uh, the jimping on the liner makes it really easy for you just to see exactly, actually, to feel exactly where the lock is without having to look at your hand at all. It's just one of those knives that just feels just right with your hand. If you're familiar with folding knives at all, if you're familiar with folding knives at all, this knife will be comfortable in your hand very quickly. You'll just sort of know where everything is and it'll, you'll get that muscle memory with this knife very quickly. I like the thumb placement. That's a really nice cutout here for the thumb. Very, very good. It's very comfortable for me. I like it an awful lot. That's a, that's one of the biggest pluses for this knife for me. Uh, very comfortable. And so when I do a long period of cutting, I found that this uh, thumb rest here was just great. I liked it a lot. It's all Torx construction, no proprietary stuff. That's a good thing. Uh, the thumb stud's removable. If you just want to use a flipper, that's a good thing. Uh, the tip up pocket clip works very well. Uh, let's demonstrate that in your pants, in my pants, actually. I'm, I don't have your pants here. And slide the knife in there. And you've got about three quarters of an inch showing, uh, almost two centimeters of the knife showing out of your pocket. So if you really don't want your knife showing at all, this pocket clip's just not deep enough for you. Uh, for the rest of us who just don't mind if a bit of the knife is showing, this is very good. And the other thing about it is it gives you a sense of being a rock solid knife. It just feels like it's made strong. And I believe that it is well made. Well, what are the negatives? Well, that pocket clip, a lot of people want it deeper carry. A lot of people will want it to be left side as well. But this knife isn't left hand designed at all. So lefties are really going to, I think, dislike this knife and not want it. Um, no sharpener's toil. I mentioned that earlier. And the uh, right side only thumb stud. Those are the big negatives. And so I like this knife. I just don't love it. You know, it's okay. It's just not great. It's pretty good. It's just nothing special. So what do I say about this knife? If you like the way this knife looks and you think that that's something you really want and the feel is something that you think you'd be attracted to and the feel is really good when you're doing long work. It's one of the better knives that I have for doing um, extended periods of cutting. If that's what you're looking for, the Enlan EW107 might be your knife. I checked around the internet. Uh, I got mine from GearBest. You can get it for $16.14 US at GearBest. That's $22.25 Canadian. I checked GUD reviews. That's good reviews. There it's um, instead of 1614 US at Good Reviews, it's 1858. At DHGate, it's 2162. At Deals Machines, it's 1849. At eBay, it's 2266. At Ever Buying, it's 1911. I couldn't find it at AliExpress. So the very best price I could find on this thing was uh, over $2 more than GearBest. And I find that so often on knives. It's not very often that GearBest has a worse price than other places. Yeah, you're going to be paying, uh, you know, a buck and a half, two bucks for shipping for this knife. But if you buy two knives at a time, you split that shipping down between the two of them. And then it's more like, you know, 89 cents a knife. Not bad at all. So GearBest has been getting some flack for adding the shipping, but I'm finding that even if you can count the shipping, the price is still less for most knives at most vendors. I'm just a GearBest fan, and uh, I make no apologies for that. I've got some really, really good news coming up soon. I had an email today that just, you know, blew my socks off. I can't share it with you yet, but uh, something big has a very good chance of coming up soon. Uh, sorry, it's not a giveaway. Uh, my next giveaway is probably going to be around 2,000 subscribers, so I've got about 350 to go. So uh, let your friends know about this channel so we can get those subscriber numbers up. So there you go. There's that knife for you. If you like the video, please click on like, share with your friends, comment. 
I really like the comment section. And if you're not yet a subscriber, please subscribe. That really helps me out a lot to get in, in with different vendors and manufacturers. And uh, so they'll talk to me about sending me stuff to review. And just before we close, in two or three days, depending on when you're watching this, if you watch it very soon after it comes out, GearBest has another big sale coming out. It's their lightning flash sale where they've got a big sale on different brand items. And uh, if you're interested at all in their sales, and I find their sales to be pretty good, check out the link that I have in the description below to get to their lightning sale information. And remember, always cut towards your chum. That is your friend, your buddy, or even your enemy that's nearby. <laughs> cut towards them and not your thumb.